Hi guys, it's Dan again. I'm in the creek here today and I'm so excited I get to spend a little time in the creek. I wanted to show you some things that you can do near to home with your friends and family. Now a few safety things right off the bat. One, if you're going out to find a creek to explore and find some critters in, you should have mom and dad, at the very least mom and dad's permission, and be with somebody who is old enough to do that safely. Two, if you're doing this, you need to choose the right time and the right place. Don't go into a stream right after a big rainstorm. There's been a few incidences lately I've been seeing on the news of young kids getting into a stream right after it's been stormy and getting caught up in the, in the floodwaters. It's very dangerous, so make sure that the stream is back to a normal level, not rushing water. You should be able to walk up to a stream and see that it's relatively clear like this stream is today. If the water is brown, too much movement, don't go in. Okay, but I want to show you the tools that I use for this and then I'm going to show you what I found today because I've been hunting for a little bit. So this right here is a kick net. It's pretty simple. Mom or dad, you guys just need an old screen door. I bet you've had that happen where you have had to replace a screen on a screen door. So you've got the screen and then two railing posts, just your basic railing posts you can get anywhere, Home Depot, etc. And you just staple on the sides. Easiest thing to make, super cool to use. You're going to put it in the water. You're going to put some stones on the front of it so that it holds the net down. And then you're going to have your friends, your loved ones, the, the people with you kick up different things ahead of you upstream of the net so that it throws things down in it. Pretty cool, pretty easy to use, pretty easy to make. The other thing that's going to be a little bit more of an investment, but these nets are a great product. Um, I buy these uh, through a catalog that I use for outdoor education things. But if you Google for a pond aquatic net, you'll get one, one with a nice sturdy metal rim, but something fun to use to dig around in the stream. And lastly, my most commonly used tool right here. There's so many good things you can find without any of that stuff. You don't need to have those. So oftentimes you can reach in, grab a rock, and then look at that rock to see if something's moving. And even just now, look at all the movement on that rock. I just pulled that out of the stream. I didn't plant them there, I promise. And you might see things that you would have never noticed if you just thought, oh, it's just a rock. Pretty cool, right? So there's so many things you can find if you dig around and if you take your time and if you watch the stream and you see, oh, that's where the crayfish just went and you dig in for that. Lots of good things to find. I'm going to be right back to you to show you what I found today. All right, welcome back. I know that was a long time, but we're going to find out what I found in the stream today. And it wasn't just me. Olivia helped quite a lot too. But here's what we found. I'm going to show you a few more tools that I use when I'm assessing what I have found and collecting things. So this is like your basic kind of bin that you can find at just about, oh, this is super cool. I'm going to talk about that. At just about any, um, any hardware or grocery store, you can find Rubbermaid totes. You also probably have some of these around. Please don't use mom and dad's ice cube trays, but they are great for collecting, especially little things that you want to keep separate so you know how to find them again. And then lastly, you can go online and print yourself out a key to macro invertebrate life in the river easy to find if you search for a PDF of that and these things are awesome it's a great way to figure out what did I find and it gives you lots of ways to break down how you found those things but I'm gonna tell you a quick show-and-tell of all the stuff we found biggest thing we found today crayfish there are so many crayfish in here and so if I just hover over this and show you look at those crayfish I'm gonna hold it real steady so Livy can zoom in but check those out so many crayfish ready to rock. Now I'm going to reach in and grab one or two so that you guys can really see what I'm talking about. See that guy right there? Pretty cool. Pretty neat looking crayfish. He's not doing much in the way of a display. Let's see if he'll swim around a little bit more. Let's see if I can get one that will display a little better for you. All right, there you go. So this is a crayfish. It's got those nice red tips. It looks like a little tiny lobster that we find in the creek, right? Um, pretty neat uh, macro invertebrate. It does not have a spine. I can see it with the naked eye, so it's a macro invertebrate. Also, it's a crustacean. But these guys will form a hierarchical order, meaning that they're like just like wolves and wolf packs. There's an alpha male and a, and a beta, and they have this order that they follow. And so crayfish are super cool like that. They're also super cool in that they molt their skin. And between when I found this and when I started this video, one of these crayfish molted out of its shell. Isn't that cool? So this is the shell of an old crayfish. 
that it molted out of. I think that's pretty neat. So um, they always are growing uh, and they'll continue to grow until they die. I have found in this very stream crayfish that were this big. Awesome, right? Pretty cool. Other things that we have found today. This guy right here is my favorite critter that we find at Gretna Glen. I'm going right to them because they're just super cool. There's three of them here. Uh, but this is what is called, oh, look at that one. He's really, he's really hunting. So now they're, they're really being active right now. But it looks like a bunch of sticks, doesn't it? But you'll notice these, these things of sticks are literally dragging themselves around my hand. This is actually a caddisfly larva. So caddisfly larva, super cool macroinvertebrate. They make their own home out of sticks and rocks and whatever's in their environment. And they will build it and then they'll live in there until it's time for them to come out and molt and become... You guessed it, a caddisfly. All right, very cool, super awesome bug. Uh, hard to find. You might just dismiss it out of hand because it looks like a bunch of sticks. Look really close because if you see a bunch of sticks that look like they're glued together, they probably are. Caddisflies, look at them go. They're just crawling around my hand. Kind of wormy looking bug in there, dragging itself around. Pretty awesome. Pretty cool. All right, I'm going to put them back in my bucket. And then I'm going to pull the last item out of the bucket that I want to show you today. This guy, oh, he bit me. <gasps> oh, nice. Now, most things won't bite you, but this guy is, is getting pretty fed up. I've pulled him out a few times. And this is about the only thing in there, aside from the crayfish, that could even get pinchers at me. But this is a Helgamite, or a Dobson fly larva. And Dobson flies are like kind of like this big, nightmarish looking bug. But Dobson flies are pretty cool. They're pretty neat. Um, this guy will molt into a full grown and they get like this big again like four to five inch bug that'll fly around if you've ever seen something huge on your window and you're like that's from Star Wars it might have been a Dobson fly also known as a Helgamite super cool all right he's back home we'll uh, explore him in a little bit some more bugs that I found again to kind of rattle through this and I know I'm going fast but I'm trying to keep your attention look in my awesome uh, crate of wonders here right there is what I want to talk about next you see that thing that guy right there has three tails, it has three pairs of legs, and it's got a stony looking back. It's the same thing as what's crawling around so fast over here and trying to skitter about. I happen to know that is a stonefly larva. Stonefly. And stoneflies, again, there's some that crawl out of the water, they'll molt, they'll become an adult, and they're good to go uh, into the adult phase. But this is what they look like while they're becoming the bug that we know and love. Speaking of bugs we know and love, this guy right here, another one, again, a type of larva or a nymph. This is a dragonfly nymph. You've seen dragonflies. There are over 5,000 species of dragonflies in the world. This guy will live for two to six years as a nymph and two to six weeks as an adult. It's good to be a kid. Live it up while you can. All right, last two things we found in there that I'm going to talk about. We have some snails. We have an orb snail and a pouch snail. They are actually just the shells. We didn't find any actual live snails today. But cool bugs to find uh, that show us such diversity of life here in our creek. Guys, this took us all of 25 minutes to find this stuff th today. It doesn't take long to find things that God put in our environment. So now, the last question I have is, is this water fresh? I'll be right back with the answer. Okay, so we found some things in this creek that are pollution sensitive today. Now pollution sensitive means it cannot live if there is pollution in the water. And so we found three different critters today that are pollution sensitive. I think that's super cool. One of those was that caddis fly, the one that I showed you that becomes, uh, that makes its own house and lives in there. They cannot live with pollution. It's my favorite bug. Please don't pollute our waters. Be careful what you put out. It all ends up in the water. All right, number two, uh, we found a stone fly. Stone flies definitely are pollution sensitive. They're the ones that I found on the back of that rock that we're moving around so much, right? Um, so we find stone flies all the time uh, in our waters, and it's a good sign. And lastly, we found that Helgamite or Dobson fly, the Star Wars bug, right? That thing um, is also pollution sensitive. Pretty cool. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in in the stream, live stream of stream. Have a great day.